Hi Alan, love it to meet up with you again and do some further work on your game. <coughs> Excuse me. Really productive session. Um, some new findings in relation to what you actually do when you hit a bad shot. Uh, the feeling you had was that you were coming over the top of the ball. Um, you can see there looking at it at P5 when the left arm, or sorry, when the right arm uh, is parallel with the ground that you're far from over the top. The shaft shallow nicely, the lead arm's angled inwards. Uh, there's absolutely no sign there that we're coming over the top. What actually happens when we hit the one that sort of hooks badly to the right is as we come through, we hit out excessively at the golf ball. So the swing and the arms are directed way too much to the left. And the problem we have there is that anything sort of resembling a square club face, which again was something that you were of the understanding that you had to have, um, it was going to produce a quick hook to the right so we've got a swing that's directed too far out to the right uh, we use the camera from the head of you looking back into the studio to show you the direction of the trail arm the left arm post impact and which angled outwards it was as you can see there with limited clearance of the lower body if we look at that from face on that produces a lack of side bend away from the target the hips don't open up successfully so there's a lot of tucking going on we've slid the hips across and there's a lot of tucking of the hips there isn't much rotation at that point and as a result whenever we're doing that too much we're going to get the, the, the trail hand the left hand in your case wrapping over the other hand closing the club face down substantially to the path of the club and it depends really what you do with the club face at impact if you leave it open to counteract the hook you, you run the risk of hitting this thing way left um, if you like I say if you square it up or get anywhere near square this ball is going to hook uncontrollably to the right hand side so it was more to do with an understanding of face and path um, and a change of swing direction that we were looking for when you do feel like you come over the top it's actually that hand rolling and twisting as we explained uh, earlier in the swing. It's still the same problem, but it's happening earlier in the swing, so the sequencing is a little bit different. So obviously using the drill that we worked extensively on where you were stopping quicker, in order to stop quick, the arms must stay on the rib cage. As the arms stay on the rib cage for longer, now this is not the finished article, as we said, we've got to keep working this in and become better at doing it. But as the arms stay on the rib cage in a much more appropriate manner, so in order to stop quick, the arms must stay on the torso. For the arms to stay on the torso, the body must start to work differently. And when that happens, we see things like the lead leg straightening, the hips coming out of their forward tilt. Uh, the hips then can continue to rotate, which will regulate what is happening with both the direction of the swing and the rotation of the club face. You can see there when the golf club when the hands hit about sort of midway through the torso, you can see the difference between the two swings, how much less out we're hitting at the golf ball. We're still hitting out, which is not hitting out uncontrollably. When we look at it from face on, we can see that there's much more of a clearance of the hips. So if you watch your belt buckle, remember one of the misconceptions with stack and tilt is that we don't want the hips to turn. Couldn't be further from the truth. The hips are continuously turning, but the sliding and tucking as well. And you can see when we do that, the belt buckle keeps moving, so the hips are continuing to move. The hands don't rotate quite as fast through the hip. And there's more stretching off of the spine. Now, as we said, this sort of increased extension if you will so if we look here this in increased side bending is a result of the orientation of the hips but also because we're stopping quicker we're now not in a position where we can actually just hurl the arms at it from the top of the backswing so what we now look for is different sources of power it's not conscious effort uh, it's just your body figuring out how to generate some speed and as we discussed in the session the stretching off of the spine the pushing up out of the ground the rotation of the body is a huge source of power so continue to hit the brakes in the finish plenty of swings where you hit it hard and stop quick and you're going to start to see 
the exit start to lower down and the body start to work considerably differently through the hip. It's a great session. Look forward to watching this one progress over the coming months. Uh, certainly should start to remedy the big hook that you've been experiencing. If you look at those bottom two images, you can see that the one on the left is much more appropriate. If you want to hook the golf ball, the one on the right is a much better sequence move. Just got to get better at doing the drill. The more you do it, the better the ball flight should become. And then the more you can sort of relax it and start it to feel a little bit more like a traditional golf swing. Good luck and look forward to working with you again.